Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to The Actor's Choice. Roll it, Tony. Do you know what the greatest thing about America is? You can make things happen here like nowhere else. You have the power to create your own future. You can be anything. You can do anything. You want to sell high-end stuffed Himalayan cats? Understuffed, actually, for greater posability. We're professionals. We're giving the people what they need. Did you see the latest numbers? We broke the entire internet. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have ever heard of the Beanie Bubble or Beanie Babies? Well, today you're going to have a chance to meet the person who is responsible for launching Beanie Babies online by creating one of the world's first e-commerce websites. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome entrepreneur, author, editor, Lena Trivati. Hi, Lena, and welcome to the Access Choice. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. First of all, I want to ask you, interesting, how, tell us who you are and how you got there. Well, my name is Lena Trivetti, and first and foremost, I'm a mother. I always say that that's the most important job that I have, and I have just been through a whole variety of experiences in technology and it all started with Beanie Babies and that's uh, what I'm here I think to talk about today. Oh. So when I see a Beanie Baby what does it look like? I have some right here. Um, <laughs> so like, <laughs> this one's Magic the Dragon and they're really uh -huh. fun. They're understuffed little bean bags and they're shaped like fun little animals and the tags have poems in them and I yes. wrote a lot of the poems from the early days and um this is a beanie baby there's so many of them and they're all completely adorable just like this little guy here now people always ask where where did you come from where, you, where were you born I was born in Chicago Chicago <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is where a lot of this first started. Um, okay. Ty was based out of a suburb in Chicago. And yes. that's where um, that's where I started working when I was in college. I understand that for you, most of you are the credit. You were the first 100, what, 136 poems of Beanie Babies? Yeah, yeah. Before they, there were no poems. And then I just had this idea to write poems in the tags. Stop, and stop, stop. You have said my favorite word. Which one? Idea. Everything idea. starts with an idea. Everything <laughs> starts with an idea. Thank you. I, I, you let me get in. Thank you. Thank you. I love uh, ideas. <laughs> yes, I love ideas. Yes. Oh, it's amazing to get an idea, you know. You sit down with a piece of paper, you write it down, you massage it, you do this. 136 yeah. poems. Uh. And it, it uh, like 87 of them were written within two days because I had the idea to write them. And then mm -hmm. Ty, the owner of the company, was like, well, I'm leaving to go overseas to okay. work out the shipments of Beanie Babies. Can you write them all before my plane lands? And I was like, sure. <laughs> it took me a little bit longer. I think it took me an extra like 12 hours, but I was just doing an all nighter writing these poems and then up all the next day. And, you know, the, the fun things that you could do when you're younger. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that today. <laughs> You, you look still look good. You look young to me. I thought you were about 30 years old. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Please tell us a little bit about your background. Born, you know, Indian American. Is that correct? Yeah, my parents immigrated here from India in uh -huh. the 70s and grew up in a very traditional Indian household. So that was very challenging, you know, being a uh, young girl growing up in American culture and balancing those values of traditional Indian culture and what we do here in America. And it was, it was, it was fun though. Yeah. Definitely fun. Just like in the movie, how um, the character that depicts me, her mother was constantly on her about, 
just, you know, working at a toy company rather than, well, I went to law school, not med school. In the movie, it was med school, but in reality, it was law school. And I ended up dropping out because I was just so into my job. And I remember my mother in real life also was like, you're working at a toy company? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it was interesting. Fun times, for sure. Ma and Pa could get a little bit disappointed. We, want, we, we sent you to law school. What law school did you go to, by the way? Um, I started at John Marshall in Chicago. Oh, good school. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Well, so, you know, these things happen. Stuff happens. So having the uh, opportunity which from your parents, they were able to cultivate your computer skills, I'm told. Yeah, we had, we were very lucky in the early days, we had one of the first IBM personal computers in our home. Okay. And that was in the mid 80s. And I learned how to write very basic programs, using the program language basic to write the programs and just had a lot of exposure to the logic that ended up helping me with coding and some of the things that I created later on in life. Uh, beginning at Thai, at Thai, my brother, uh, my little brother, he also worked at Thai. I brought him in when I needed help when we were building all of these things and doing some of the graphics work. And he had started learning how to do some of this stuff in high school because yes. they were just starting to teach graphic arts in high school. And he was dabbling also in HTML and some of the languages and it just was really a perfect storm between the skill sets that I had, the skill sets that my brother had, the situation with Beanie Babies, the rise of the internet. It's like everything was coming together in literally the perfect storm. And what a fun journey was it between Beanie Babies, I mean, these adorable products that the world was starting to go crazy for, and then just being credited to taking the product from millions to billions, which that's the power of the internet. Did I hear you say you're a millionaire? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it seems like everyone around me is. <laughs> I think that's kind of the way the world works sometimes, but you know, maybe maybe things will change for me in the future. <laughs> you always got you, one follows two follows three and on down the line. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, yeah. I noticed one thing about you. You have a very nice attitude. And I always say your attitude will determine your altitude, you know? It's one oh, I two. love that. Yeah, that's very true. You I think take, it that... home take it home with you. I won't charge you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that when it's when I started with yes. everything that I was doing at Thai, I think that the entire story of what I did with Beanie Babies and the Internet yes. is a testament to how young people, a lot of times they're faced with opportunities and they are so focused on what they're getting out of it and what's in it for them as opposed to just investing everything they have into the opportunity that's presented before them and then just seeing where they land at the end of it. And, you know, there's pros and cons to that, but I don't think that if I had that attitude where I was concerned about what am I getting out of it, I w there's no way I would have accomplished everything that I did while working at Thai. Um, you know, as in the movie, they show that the character was making $12 an hour at the end of it. And that is, in reality, what was happening, but I still came out of the experience with so many skill sets and things mm -hmm. that I learned that nobody could take that away from me. No. And I have leaned on that my entire life, my entire career, right. including what I'm doing today. Talk about presentation. You are, you're selling a product, you gather a lot of people together, and then you try to sell, sell them on it. Talk, tell us about that. Um, you mean in terms of the internet? Yes, ma'am. Well, the internet kind of does a lot of that for you, I think, because you, you're you're presenting information yes. on the internet, and a lot of times the the purpose of presenting the information, even if it's not to sell a physical uh -huh. product, it's to sell them on something. It's either to sell them on following you, it's to sell them on, on ag agreeing with what it is that you're saying it might be you know to join a platform or or whatever the case might be yes. that's what and then when it boils down to it that's what communication a lot of times is about when it comes to business when it comes to um one things you watch on television mm -hmm. it, it the the presidential debates i mean everything it, it boils down to to selling right mm -hmm. See, I tell you that lady knew what she was talking about. I told you all about that. She knows what she's talking about. 
<laughs> you mentioned Tay, T-A-Y. Can you tell us about how that impacted on what you did? You talking about Ty? Okay, your time. Mm -hmm. Ty, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. those that was my earliest experience in technology. Mm -hmm. It was before technology existed as we know it. That's mm -hmm. where I was working, and those are all the experiences that built the the foundation mm -hmm. of what I do today. Uh, now I work in AI, and I've been working that. in AI for probably mm -hmm. the last 10 years or so, and I'm really excited about just all of the possibilities. And again, it feels like back in the 90s when the internet was not a thing, when people didn't even know what the internet was, and going through that whole trajectory of people now learning what the internet is, going out and getting computers and going out and, and getting America online, which was the big thing back then to get online and, and, and going to web pages and just that whole learning curve. I feel like we're going through that again today with AI because people are learning now how AI can benefit them and what are the things that AI can do to make them more productive and make them more efficient with the things that they're trying to do. Okay. And I'm just really enjoying working with it. The uh, controversy sometimes when people see AI, they think people are stealing from. Can you? What do you? What's your thoughts about that? You know, in the, it's very early days, so there's going to be a lot of uh, trial and error in terms of what mm -hmm. the capacity of AI is and what is ethical to use AI for. And the, the what we're working on at Joy.ai is what we're working on right now. It's J-O-I-I.ai, which you can check it out online. And what our AI is doing is me and my partner, Nithin Luther, we've joined forces to render human emotion into mm -hmm. AI so that you can connect with an AI replica of yourself in order to have it connect with the people that you're closest to your inner circle so yeah. i am i'm just really excited about all of the possibilities and to answer your question i think that because it's such an early time frame for ai just like it was back in the 90s when we were just exploring all the possibilities of the internet i yeah. think that we'll all land in the right place as long as we all keep voicing what our thoughts are and what we believe the right thing to do is and what we believe the technology should be utilized for, then I think that we'll land in the right place. You know, with the, the space that I'm working in, for example, yeah. um, AI companions is something that a lot of people are developing. And when you look at an AI companion, that's not what we're doing. We're, we're trying to accomplish the same goal of addressing loneliness and social isolation, but is an AI companion really the, the, the solution to that? Or... Yeah. In our situation, we're producing AI in order to help you connect with real humans. The real, like, for example, my brother, my brother and I, we talk maybe once a month. I hate that we only talk once a month, but we're both so busy. So how is AI going to help me and my brother control our busyness so that we can actually connect with one another? Because for both of us, it's a priority. We both want to talk to one another a little bit more, but we both have children. We both have families and life and work and all these demands that are placed upon us, to me, that is a conversation, an example of a conversation of how can we leverage AI to really accomplish what we want and what we need, as opposed to letting AI guide us. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'll take a moment to show you some, because this is, when you talk about technology, it really, get, I've seen in my lifetime, I've seen a lot of change. I can remember when we had electron tubes, if you can dig that. But Electron here tubes. In, <laughs> really? Here we are in 2023, and th something comes along. I call it the second brain. Have you ever seen the second brain? No. Here it is, right here. Oh, right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Hi, second brain. <laughs> I follow you now. Yeah. You know, oh, and that's the funny goodness. thing. There was a time where people uh -huh. didn't even didn't even comprehend the power of a smartphone. Yes. Yes. And some of the, the elderly, they they still leave their house without their phone. And I I, I call them and I'm like, what are you doing? I, I didn't bring my, why not? It's like no, no. a little thing, just put it in your pocket. You know, no. um, so it's, it's just interesting to, to see how the smartphone has changed the way that we do things. And I think no. that's very similar to what no. AI is going to be. So we went from the dumb phone to the smartphone. Okay, I got you. <laughs> yeah, the flip phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got a couple more minutes. What advice would you give folks trying to get into the business? In which business? What you doing, whatever you're doing. Oh, in technology. Yeah, technology. I think that the big challenge is uh, whether you're a woman, whether you're from an underrepresented community, wherever you're coming from, if it's a passion and you have an idea, we just talked about ideas, yes. then stand behind your idea and push that idea forward and keep going and keep going and keep going. And for some of us, that's a little bit harder than for others. You know, I experienced a lot of challenges. There are other people that will experience a lot of challenges because sometimes it's difficult to be heard. And sometimes yes. it's difficult to have access to some of the opportunities that will allow you to develop your idea. But you have to keep pushing forward. And that's the way I see it. Try to figure out what your strengths are. Try to figure out what your advantages are. Because even as a woman, as a person of color, no matter who you are, you have an advantage. You just have to figure out what that advantage is and push through the barriers and get your idea out there. Because it's so gratifying when you see your idea take form when you give birth to it i mean look at the things that they say that i've done they say i gave birth to the internet i gave birth to e-commerce i mean all of these amazing yes. things that i can't even wrap my mind around sitting here with you today but that happened because i had that perseverance to gotcha. take an idea and push it forward and just take it as far as it'll go then gotcha. i want to thank you very much for being here today i know we all learned something and all the good things that are good, but what's next for you? Please give us your best. Tell us about what's next for you, because they always say, what is it that you haven't done yet, but you're going to do it? Enjoy that AI. I am so excited about taking human yes. emotion, rendering it through artificial intelligence, yes. and producing yes. a product that's going to really help people. I think that joy is missing in our world in general. And I think that with what we're creating, we're going to bring joy back by just enabling human connection. We need to connect with each other a little bit more than we are right now. And that's what I'm really excited about. And if you want to learn more about it, you could go to J-O-I-I dot A-I. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, publicist, uh, my old dear friend, Monica Alexander, longtime friend. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Alina Tabrini. This is the Action Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. Roll it, Tony. We would like to let you know that we're asking our Actors' Choice Squad to help us get former baseball player Kurt Flood into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Now, Kurt passed away January 20th, 1997, was the husband of one of our wonderful guest renowned actress, Judy Pace. So give us a call, 231-239-3941. Correction, That's 213-349-3941. We sincerely thank each and every one of you for being a part of this magnificent award for a great baseball player, okay? Okay, next one there. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for the incredible, and I say again, incredible number of requests that we have been receiving for flyers, postcards, business cards, and other collateral. Now, to streamline the process, we kindly request that you visit our request page and submit your requests, including those on the on-site areas. For marketing and PR collateral, please provide us with a minimum of 48 hours lead time. The contact person for an appearance and their information can also be found on our page. That link is www.theactorschoicela.org. Again, that's www.theactorschoicela.org. Okay? And, and a forward slash requests. Thank you so much. Brother Tony. Hi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest today is an award-winning actress. Now, she began focusing on creating stories that inspire, educate, empower, and bring new perspectives to audiences. Now, on film, this lady has acted in and co-produced the award-winning San Angels. Yeah. Today, she's here to talk about her new play, so let's get it on. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome Astley. Hi, nice to meet you, Ron. Much. Thank you very, very much for being here today. My goodness. First of all, tell us, where were you born at, madam? I was born in South Africa. South Africa. Okay. Okay. Got it. The South of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. So what, here's my favorite question. I love to throw this at you. I love to throw this at you. What made you get into acting? Um, 
I think I've I've always been acting. I was acting in school. Uh-huh. I was acting in plays. You know, since uh-huh. I was like knee high, really. So it felt like it's always been part of my life. So it didn't really feel like okay, um, this is something I'm getting into. It's been I've been doing it since I was a child. Right. And I love it. I love performing. Um, and I've always been totally obsessed with movies um, since I was a child. I mean, I remember I remember watching, what was the first movie? I think was, I think it was called Orca. Uh-huh. Uh, Orca the Whale. Okay. And my mom would come into the living room and I'd be watching and I would be watching. And it was about this whale who, I think someone shot the whales, <clears throat> the whales, um mom and the mom lost the baby so there i am i'm pretty young and i'm like in tears but not just once every time my mother comes in i'm watching the movie again and i'm like crying and she's like what are you doing this is a movie this is insane i can't let you do this i'm like mom i got so into it you know i've always been i've always been so in love with film since I was, you know, so young. So I think it's just been something I've been really, really passionate about. You've done a lot of work and I see you've done some, some definite works and they've done some work. Eight credits looking good. Education and training. You got a little, uh, what's that? Uh, yeah, Shakespeare. You got a little tr- behind you, behind your back, right? I mean, I did, I did a ton of Shakespeare classes. I didn't go to a Shakespeare school yeah. per se, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I trained at the method studio in London. And then um, we had like, we had teachers from all, you know, from many, many drama schools teaching right. us many different types of like Meisner and, uh, um, you know, Lena Lessing taught, taught us like movement. And I had Shakespearean teachers. I had, um, I've done like all, all different types of um, methods, basically. And it shows. Did I hear you say you're in London right now? No, I'm in LA right now, but I, I moved from South Africa to London. Okay. So I spent a lot of time in London. Yes. I lived there for a number of years. So yeah, and you know, there, Beautiful like city. New York, it just has an amazing um, like array of theatre, just like the best theatre out there. Okay. Um, but again, like New York, New York has also got amazing theatre. So Yes. I love New York. I was born and raised in New York City. Oh and my I- God, I love New York. Mm. Oh, Broadway. You were you were raised there? Yes, up uptown wow. Manhattan. Yes, a place called a section of it called Harlem. I was born and raised there. Yes, oh. I know Harlem. Yes, I love I it. All the food, hot dogs, pretzels. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. That's amazing. That's so good. I know. Yeah. I mean, I think the only thing I'm not so in love with uh, with New York is the weather. Yes. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've actually I never thought I'd live in LA because really the weather is not something that attracts me to LA at all. I, I don't particularly love perpetual sunshine, you know, um, for the, for the whole year, but in, um, but apparently I went to New York for an audition once and I came back and I was like walking down, mm-hmm. you know, I was walking and I remember thinking and the sun was shining and I just come from New York and it was really cold. And for the first time ever, I was actually LA is pretty cool. <laughs> not bad. A little chill at night, but not bad. Not bad. Yeah, but actually, this year we've had a really, really. I mean, a, a, you know, normally there's not much. There's not, there's not normally a lot of weather changes, but this year we've had a real winter. Yes. Okay. Mm. You came here to L.A. You mm-hmm. start to see what's happening in Hollywood. Your first IMDb was Army Story in 2010. Yes. Remember that? Yeah, it was about. Um, it was about. Uh, sexual violence in the army mm. so um i hadn't really known much about it but yeah it was, so it was about I mean, a woman who'd real. been violated in the army yeah. and yeah it was pretty intense yeah. i mean i i usually the projects that i do usually have some kind of at the core it has some some kind of message or some kind of um you know i, I like doing things um on subjects that really matter Hmm. So Army Strong, of course, wasn't a comedy. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Um, it was a drama. I yeah. loved. I, I mean, I love dramatic roles. That's my like not my favorite. I mean, I love all sorts of roles, but I do love drama a lot. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was a great that was a that was a great short. And um, what else did I? Yeah, so that's that's where it started. I did. Um, you know, I did a Romeo another. 
<laughs> yeah, running on empty. That was a bit about mental health. Yes. Um, and then I did also. I actually directed something called Perception. Yes. That was a that was about. Um, it was actually based. It was loosely based on the Amber Geiger trial. Mm-hmm. You know, Amber Geiger, the 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 white woman that shot the black man in his home. Uh, so it was kind of loosely based on that because the whole the whole the whole story just completely like rocked my whole perception of stuff. You know, I was just like, oh my god, this is insane. So it was kind of loosely based on that. Um, yeah, again, a drama. So I see you have a new movie coming in. It's called Eat Your Heart Out. <laughs> like yes. That. In production? Yes. You're the writer? Well, You're the producer? I'm the writer, yeah. That's the script. Great. The script, yeah. You stay busy. I mean, you get it. Tell us a little bit about this this particular uh, role, please. So, um, which which one? Eat Your Heart Out? Uh, eat Your Heart Out. Because we're, we're, we're going to ask the next one in just a minute. Yeah, so Eat Your Heart Out is, um, it's a, it's a, also, it's a dark comedy yes. about, um, another aspect in, 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 uh, Los Angeles, uh, about a family dynamic in Los Angeles. Um, yeah. So it's a dark comedy again. Like I really like, um, the, the before or the desperate attempt to impress and read to the, my, uh, my show, the one that the TV, um, a TV pilot I wrote is based on. Um, again, this is like, a it's about a family, uh, living in Los Angeles. Um, but it's an interracial family so um the husband is uh american from la and the wife is from south africa and it's really just about integrating their families mm-hmm. interesting these are good uh-huh. shows these are good movies you go and sit in there and <sighs> look at a good play uh, watch a movie and you get a little bit of what i call education you know that's what it's all about <laughs> yeah <Hey. laughs> Okay. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. We came here today, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about, you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. Ba-buck. Or the desperate attempt to impress Inarutu. Did I say that right? Inarutu. Ah, go, go, okay. Tell us about that synopsis, please. Um, so Bafok really is, Bafok is an Afrikaans word, which is um, uh-huh. one of the languages that is spoken in South Africa. Yes. Afrikaans is an old form of Dutch. So uh, befork means it's kind of however you use the word. It is, um, it's kind of, it means a number of, a number of things. So it can mean, it can mean crazy. It can mean awesome. It can mean um, angry. It can mean not right in the head. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of meanings to it. And this is um, before called the desperate attempt to impress Naritu is about um, the South African actress. Yes. Um, she has a big birthday coming up in seven days. And uh, she always swore to herself that she would be famous by then. And uh, so she's at a Whole Foods in El Tadina, mm-hmm. And she she spots at the, the movie director, the Academy Award winning director, Alejandro Gonzalez Naritu. She spots him at a... Altadina, I mean, sorry, at a Whole Foods. And um, she thinks it's a sign from the universe that um, that this is her opportunity to, um, you know, this is her opportunity to be famous. Mm-hmm. And, and that basically it's telling her, the universe is saying to her, you are the one we are choosing for his next project. Um, so basically it's about, seven days of her trying to get to him uh, in any way possible you know she she tries to get to she she stalks him she does a multitude of things so it's really it's really funny (laughs) but it also like it also addresses some serious situations uh you know the effects of domestic abuse the effects of uh alcoholism but it's really funny it's um it's a real roller coaster of a ride. Um, it's really giving the audience an experience. Um, so it's a fun experience, but you'll feel a whole lot, which is which is things that really matter to me. I love to um, to watch things. My favorite things to watch is, 
you know, things that make you think, like uh, shows or movies that make you think, but make you feel something deeply. And I think, I believe that you will watching the show. Okay. You're playing the role of Lola. Exactly, yeah. Lola Love. Lola Love. Tell us about Lola Love. Two Vs. Lola Love with two Vs. <laughs> <laughs> because she gets, she thinks it gives her something extra. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah, so Lola Love is just... She is, you know, she she just thinks that she's watched a ton of movies. So she thinks that by if she if she is like a movie star or acts like a movie star, she has an idea of what a movie star is. So she's so she's she's very affected, you know, she's always like she's very over the top. She's very cheesy in a sense, you know, she wears leopard print and bright colors. And um she she comes across like she has no idea um, how to act at all, but we do find out that actually she does have talent, but she really is her, her own worst enemy, basically. You know, if she was just literally, if she didn't put up such a, if she didn't act like all these people, she actually, people, she would, she, you know, she would be a great actress, but um, she doesn't think that she's enough. So she she tries to act like everyone else, and um, so that's really her journey, you know. We got a picture of her. One picture of her. Mm -hmm. You are looking good. Oh, look at you! There you go. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is going to run from October twenty first through November fifth, and it's going to be where is it going to be at? The Odyssey Theater in Odyssey West LA. Theater. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's God. a really beautiful theater. Yes. Oh God, and the food is great. Food is other uh, featured mm -hmm. over there. I like to go over there. Got my final question. You ready? Yes. What excites you the most about this play? Um, well, what excites me the most about this play, it's such a challenging role. Uh -huh. It's um, you know, it's got drama, it's got comedy, it's got a lot of um, you know, it's very physical. So I'm dancing, I'm singing, I'm um you know, uh, there's a lot of movement. Um, and even though it's 75 minutes, it's a real, it's a real workout. So I, I have to use a lot of my acting skills yeah. to, um, it's kind of like everything incorporated in one. And, and, and the reason why also it's, it's really challenging. It's like, I'm one person on stage, but I think what's exciting about it is I've kind of, I wanted the experience to be cinematic. So it's really one person on stage, but things like sound and lights and um, and uh, it's kind of all comes together to give the audience member um, like a cinematic experience. So it's like they're coming to watch a little movie. You know, I think one of the reviews, um, because I was trying it out at the Hollywood French Festival in June, yeah. you know, just to work on the character and stuff. And... Um, and uh, yeah, and I think one of the reviews was like, it was like they had just come to watch a solid little indie film. And I thought that was really cool because that's what I wanted, you know? Yes. Okay. So I use like voice and audio as if you are, as if there are people in the room. Yeah. So it's like building a world with audio, which I, which I think is really interesting. Aston, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. So much for being here today. I want to thank your publicist, my dear friend Lucy Pollock, mm -hmm. who constantly delivers champion actors and actresses to us here at the Actors Choice. Thank Thanks so much, Ron. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This is the Actors Choice. I'm your host, Ron Rowington. Roll it, Tony. Have a wonderful day. Hey, th thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Now, unfortunately, the guy you see in that picture right there, that's my dear friend, Kevin Fleming. Uh, he passed away Thursday, September 21st, suffering from pancreatic cancer for a long, long time. Our prayers are with him and his family. They're in need of financial assistance. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a call, if you will, www.gofundme.com. Please, there you go. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Please let, help him out. They need help desperately. Okay? Okay, roll to Tony. <laughs>
Transformational Rocal, give us a call at 213-349-3941. That's 213-349-3941. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Roll it, Tony! Oh, my God, it's right here. Staying at the hotel? Yeah. Just for a little while. I'm actually looking for an apartment in town. You know anything? Mm-mm. Welcome to Costa Verde. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest today, she is a veteran actress, director, and producer. And as they say here in the business, ladies and gentlemen, who don't know this lady? She's extremely versatile with over 25 years of experience in the entertainment industry. She has made her mark as a highly acclaimed director, award-winning filmmaker, and accomplished actor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bernadette Speaks. Bernadette, thank you so very, very much for coming in today and welcome to the Actors' Choice. Well, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, like them glasses you got on, girl. Looks oh, good. Looks you. D-double-O-G, <laughs> as they say. Please tell us where you were born. I was born in New York, in Mount Vernon Hospital, actually. And, but I grew up in Chicago, so I feel like I'm more of a Chicagoan than I am a New Yorker. Got you. Got you. Do you ever step back to New York every now and then? I haven't been back in a very long time, a very long time, but I'm looking forward to making my way over there. Yeah, it's time. It's get time. Some right. Yes, actually. Sauerkraut. Yeah. Oh, or, oh, or potato knish. That's what I remember. Yes. The potato knish on the corner, you know. With mustard on it, yeah. Yes, with mustard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was born and raised in Harlem, so I would go, I, I'd sneak around, get me a little taste every now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my aunt used to live in Harlem and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Like I say, who don't know you? My goodness, well known in the business. Oh, thank oh, you. Since you well know, what made you get into business? <laughs> Actually, I consider myself a late bloomer, which is really odd because um my growing up, my mom introduced me to Broadway. Uh -huh. and, uh, I actually thought Broadway was black until I saw the Tony Awards. I was like, wait, wait. Well, who are all these other people? And she was like, well, there's, more, there's more shows on Broadway, honey, besides the ones I've taken you to. Got you. So I grew up, um, you know, just to be focused. I was, I had a lot of energy. So my mom put me in a lot of arts and um, sports and things, but I never thought, oh, this is what I want to do when I get older until I got to college. Yeah. And by the time I was a junior, I hadn't interned anywhere. <laughs> I was like, kind of like all my sorors because I'm a Delta they all were like focused on where they were going, the trajectory of their life. And I was just kind of like waywardly figuring it out. And my theater teacher basically said, uh, you should think about doing this as a full major because uh, I think you're talented. And it meant a lot to me because I was like the only black kid um, at the University of Georgia in the theater department and he was the only black teacher. So it was just like, wow, okay. And then I did. And then there you go. <laughs> The year 1996, yeah. your first IMDb, you had a movie that you was in, was called To Sir With Love. <laughs> yes. You and Sydney. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to be honest, like that, that was daunting, um, knowing who he is, you know, yes. knowing that he's my, one of my parents' favorite actors. And then I had this opportunity to work with him, but he was the most giving he was really my film teacher, to be honest. Yes. Like college taught me theater and professional theater taught me more theater, but Mr. Portier taught me film. He took five of us underneath his wing and we met with him like before we shot. So if my call time was say seven, I would meet with him at six and we would go over our scenes since majority of my scenes were with him. And he really taught me what it was like to act in front of the camera and the nuances and the simplicity of it. It was just memorable. I'm so grateful that was like my first on camera job. Sydney, oh, Sydney Poitier. God bless him. Thank yeah. God bless him. What are some of the roles that you like to do? Oh, wow. Um, I love to do, uh, well, in theater, I love to do what I'm doing now, which is playing a variety of different roles. Okay. Um, one of my favorite shows that I've done is called From the Mississippi Delta, which I did at the Fountain Theater. And it was only three of us. 
um, in the play mm -hmm. of Willama Wright, Juanita Jennings, and myself. But we got to play a multitude of people telling this story. And I love when I get to do that. Um, it's challenging. It keeps me out of my head, but in um, my body. And um, it gives me a voice of all these different people that, you know, create this world that we're we're portraying to the people in the audience. Yes. When it comes to film, I don't think I've played my favorite role yet, to be honest, in TV or film. I think that I can play a heck of a mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, of various kinds of moms. Um, mm -hmm. But I have so much more in me that I don't even think I've scratched the surface. Yes. Goodness. So. You're busy. I have a video. I found a, I found this video on you. It's called All American Clip. Can you run that one, Tony? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Quintel Dennis, Marcus Hurd, Tyson Glover, Jamero Maxwell, Sean Scott. I'm tired, y'all. Sean Scott since before he could walk. He should be sitting right here next to his beautiful mother. When I saw it, I said to myself, that's 29 seconds, good seconds right there. Go ahead and make sure we play that. You're looking good. Oh, thank you. Moving fast forward, a new thing you're doing, I understand, TV movie called The Sanctuary. Oh, wow. That was my first written job. Yes. Uh, collaborate with a wonderful... Um, actress producer her name is Jacqueline Fleming she's also from Chicago yes our first um it was a um a pilot that we wrote and we actually wrote it over COVID I think gotcha. it, like be no it was before COVID right before COVID and okay. you know, just pitching it getting it out there we've changed it a couple of times so mm -hmm. we're getting some um looks at it so yeah I'm excited about that project who's the director of that one we haven't picked one yet okay so, yeah but we have some names that we've definitely like jotted down that are like our star, you yeah. know. Yeah. All right. You do like I say, you're a busy lady. You're a busy, uh, busy lady. I am. Uh, I, I try to be busy, but not too busy. You know. Okay. Here's my fun question. I love to do this. When you're on a set, mm -hmm. where is your favorite position on set? Oh my goodness. Um, well, it used to be my honey wagon. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of uh just kind of yeah just kind of be in my honey wagon with food but now I really love um uh to be near the director and watch near the cinematographer and watch watch what they're doing how yes. they're doing that shot how they're setting it up watch how the director is communicating with his team you know really take notice not only how he's working with me or, or she's working with me uh-huh but also just kind of, you know, try to step outside and look in when I'm not uh, filming. And I love that. I'm so fascinated by the techniques that different people use, the way in which they want to approach a shot. Yes. It, it's such a learning moment for me and I love it. Okay. You are now working on a play, ladies and gentlemen. They call it Rise. Yes. <laughs> Rise the Rhythm. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Tell us about that. Woo. Oh, my goodness. To be in California for over 20 years and not really know anything about Boyle Heights. Yes. I It was such a nice rabbit hole to dive into, learning just about the culture. Like, because you hear Boyle Heights today and you go, oh, it's East L.A. It's majority Latino, you know, neighborhood. But it's so much more than that. And to learn about this. Ellis Island of Los Angeles and the history and the culture and everyone that came out of it. And it's so enriching. And so to be a part of that, it has taught me so much, especially playing a love story yeah. where this woman has this true love and she, lo she loses him, you know, but then she marries someone else and he's a good guy. It's just a different kind of love it really tapped me into my grandmother who had the same experience. And as a young person, very immature and not understanding, yes. being able to be this age and on this side and understand it in such a deeper way, uh, just the triangle of love and how you're able to, but it's not gonna be the same or the 
or the fact that I'm playing a woman that comes from a time where we didn't process, we didn't go to therapy. So you're going through heartache, yes, you know, heartache of people moving out of your out of your neighborhood that you've grown up with, heartache of gentrification, heartache of losing the love of your life, heartache of of losing your child, you know, and mm -hmm. you're kind of the living you're living and everybody else is gone, yeah. you know, and it makes up who you are. But at the same time, talking about things that are almost in the present, even though they're in the past and really understanding that and, and playing that and having a deep respect for my ancestors that came through World War II and came through that time of such tenacity and strength, but also the bittersweetness of never really being able to process all of their feelings and emotions you know and not judging them but understanding it so much more so this has been so, this this blessing this gift that just fell into my lap <laughs> without me even looking for it, but it has been so enriching to work with my the team at company of angels to work with kimba who is not only a good friend of mine but also i've been a big fan of her writing for for years yes but you know the power that we have between black men, black women, the struggle that we have with each other. Yes. Fighting each other, loving each other, living each other, the boy Fs, all kind of crazy things we're doing in the world today. But you do that play. And you know, it's interesting. I gotta I'll take just a second on this because this is this is my bone, my baby bone. <laughs> okay. we, get, we get a lot of you know, we get all these people coming to LA. I want to be a star, right? Well, that might be a star. But they do television, they do film, they won't get up on that stage. No, 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 no. Oh, it's a stamina thing. I'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> to be able to do theater you don't have a take two nope if you drop a line you better figure it out Amen. and luckily if you're working with a crew of people that are um have your back you yes. know and can help you like filter through if you mess up or whatever it just creates more magic and that's what i love about theater the, not only the magic of being on stage but also being able to um feel the energy of the audience it's it's i cannot explain it and there's nothing like it but a true artist for me uh -huh. hones, their, hones their skill on that stage yes because it's something new every single day and if you're doing it like on broadway where you're doing eight shows a week Ooh. for six months or more Right. That stamina of taking care of yourself your voice mm -hmm. your instrument your body your mentality your spirituality all of it, you know, not to take anything away from film and, tele film and television, but let me tell you, theater is a whole different beast. Gotcha. I got to throw this one in here. You are a filmmaker. When I saw that, it yes, because everything starts with my favorite four letter word, an idea. <laughs> it's true. What it is. Yes. Oh, yes. You are a filmmaker. God yes. bless you, lady. Thank you. you. Hope you do well with that. That's oh, that's thank you. So mm. far, so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so, so, ladies and gentlemen, if, if it gets down to it, don't mess with this lady. I'm gonna I'm tell like this, but Bernadette speaks. That's <laughs> all I gotta discuss. She's she said yeah. she's talking. Yeah. No, oh, God bless you. Bernadette one, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Glad to have you here today. Quite a lady, quite a lady. Uh, again. I'll be at the Company of Angels. That's where the play will be. Yes. Uh, and and what, give me some dates, please. We run Friday, Saturday, Sundays, Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Yes, ma'am. At 7 p.m. We are running for the next, what, three weeks. We close November 5th. So please come, please come. You you won't be disappointed. God bless you, lady. God bless you, Bernadette. God bless, God bless you, you. Thank you. And, and please thank your publicist. I like that lady, Susan D. Go ahead. Susan, she's amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. She's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You, we'll, we'll do the same to you, babe. The same, same to you, man. I want to thank our sponsors, Harvey Random Photographers and Art, Ron Irwin's Lose Life, The Way to Lose Weight, Larry Buford's Book to the Future, Time Travel Message in His Capsule, State Farm agent Carla Green and veteran actor Rob Bromstein's Actor Training School, and actor space. Much thanks to our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneur, author, Lana Travetti, actress, producer, writer, Asta Lee, actress, director, producer, Bernadette Speaks. The actress choice is a presentation of b, b Productions, ladies and gentlemen, Rudolph Brewington, president, Sidney Chandler, executive producer. Much special thanks to our ever-growing audience. I'm Ron Brewington. Be well. See you next time.